So we've discussed that uh, energy has a lot of forms, mechanical, heat, chemical, nuclear, sound, light, all these different forms, and they can transform into each other. And eventually we ended up with heat, because that's the unit we're stressing now. And then we said that heat can be transferred, and we mentioned through radiation, conduction, and convection. Well, heat can also be uh, transferred by being gained into a system, like water, or it can be lost. So I've prepared a, uh, a PowerPoint or a slideshow that goes through this, and I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I'm going to start that up for you. This is on Moodle. You can look there, and it's an interactive thing, so you can see exactly how heat is gained or lost. So we'll go through. Heat can be transferred by being gained or by being lost. So we call them heating and cooling curves. And so we can ask questions like this. When we melt ice, we're going to notice that the temperature does not change at the melting point. When we boil water, the temperature doesn't change. We want to know why. What kind of energy relationships are occurring as ice melts and then bo water boils? What do we call the stages when ice melts? Melting point and water boils, boiling point. What is going on there? We've talked about states of matter and phases of matter. The states are the solid, liquid, and gas. But there are phases of matter which are similar, but they're not the same. So let's look at this. We have what's called phase change diagrams, and the one kind is when energy is gained. That is called endothermic, in heat, literally. And you notice mathematically we use a plus sign, and that delta sign there, the triangle, is a uh, means to change the heat. That's a heating curve. Heat flows into the reaction from the surroundings. Then we have the exothermic, out heat, where the heat change is negative if we use math. We call that a cooling curve, where heat flows from the reaction mixture into the surroundings. So we, in the lab that we did this time, uh, we did an endothermic heating curve, which eventually looks like that if you have all five stages. Now in our lab, we only could do ice at zero degrees up to the boiling point of 100. So we really only went from B to C to D to E. We didn't include the legs of A, B, and E, F. If we were to label the phases, you can see that we have the three states, solid, liquid, gas. But then there's the in-between states, B, C, and D, E. That's solid liquid. It is a different phase. You'll see why in a second. And liquid to gas, when liquid boils and produces steam, or in this case gas, that's a different phase as well. And you'll notice that the temperature at both of those places does not change. Take the orange and go to the left and you'll see temperature remains the same. So what energy exists at each phase? Well, from A to B, you have an increase in temperature. By definition, that is kinetic energy. Line B, C, there is no temperature change. Yet, it's on a hot plate and the ice is melting. So we know that's potential energy. There's those two name brand energies. Okay. And then again, C to D, the temperature is changing, so we know that that is kinetic energy again. From D to E, there is no temperature change, therefore it must be potential energy because heat is being put into the system on a hot plate. And lastly, you have again a temperature increase, I should say from E to F, not AB, and that is kinetic energy. But there's also special names. I want you to notice heat effusion there. That is the actual special name for the potential energy when ice melts or when water freezes. It goes both ways. That value has been determined by scientists as 80 calories per gram, so we just need to uh, look it up on a reference table, but know that that is the potential energy. Then from water to steam or from steam to water, we have what's called the heat of vaporization, H sub V. And that value has been determined at 540 calories per gram. Again, it's on a reference table. So if we look at the chart overall, we can compare the energies involved. And again, I don't want to go through all this. You can go to the PowerPoint now and um, go through this for yourself. I'll just do the first one. For instance, from line A, B, again, we know that the temperature increases from negative 20 to 0. And that is a phase change because it's, uh, temperature's increasing. That's kinetic energy. And potential energy does exist, but it doesn't change. Okay. We can do the exact same thing in reverse. As you notice now, we go from gas to liquid to solid. And if you look to the right, you'll see the kinetic energy is where the temperature changes. The potential energies are where the temperature does not change. 
The upper potential energy at 100 degrees is the heat of vaporization. The lower potential energy at zero degrees is the heat of fusion. So either direction, we can actually see how the energy flows. We can also do a mathematical calculation. And that's where we find that uh, kinetic energy is always determined by mass times specific heat times a change in temperature. Okay. And that's the equation you see. And we tend to uh, get scared of this, but it's not that difficult. This is kinetic energy. Wherever there's a temperature change, we have kinetic energy. You see that delta H is the change in heat, mass is the uh, heat it needs to include mass, that's the difference between heat and temperature. And then we have the specific heat of a substance. And I've gone through and shown you for water here, you can see water has a specific heat of one, or we can put it into joules. Ice is one half calorie per gram degree Celsius. Notice this is heat, this is mass, this is temperature. Mass, heat, and temperature give you specific heat. And steam is the same as ice. And delta T is always the final temperature minus the initial. To find the uh, heat of fusion, which is the potential energy, we'd multiply mass times the 80 calories per gram, or we can change it to joules. Same thing for heat of vaporization. We take the mass and we multiply it by 540 calories per gram, every gram we have.